mother dick. Hey, what's good, everybody? I'm going to do the top 15 episodes of AMC's The Walking Dead, and it's not counting season 7. There's 83 total. I was gonna narrow it down to the top 10, but it was just so difficult. Like, that show has so many good episodes. It was so difficult. I'm doing top 15. Let's go ahead and get started on that. I'm gonna just give a uh, brief little thing about the episode and what I like about it, etc. Number 15, season 6, episode 3, I believe. Thank you. That's the episode that Nicholas takes himself out and says thank you and falls and dies and everyone's like oh my god Glenn's dying no uh, obviously Glenn wasn't gonna die obviously if you really if you go back and watch that episode before you know it was you know shown that Glenn was not dead you can see that it just it's like first off they're not gonna kill Glenn off that way you know what I mean but it's also you can tell that it's like higher up you know like what the zombies are eating you could always tell it was higher up and also, Glenn and Nicholas were wearing the same color shirt. One was wearing gray with, like, a greener out shirt, and the other was wearing green with a gray outer shirt. So, like, it was just... Either way, it was just... But that was a really good episode. It's just showing them trying to keep the zombies away from Alexandria as they're slowly getting there. You got to see more of my boy Heath, which they really haven't done much with, but I'm pumped because this season we'll be seeing Tara and Heath on a run or doing something. Anyways, Heath is one of my favorites in the comics. Him and Glenn are... They're... They're each other's boys. They're always doing runs and stuff together, but they haven't done crap together in the show. Heath was a part of Glenn's group and all, but like you get to see them more together, and you see Nicholas trying to redeem himself. He kill. He puts down a zombie that he finds that was one of his previous people that him and Aiden got killed. It's just a really good episode. I and you get to see Scott. You get to see a bunch of other random people, but just it's. I really like to see just the Alexandrians. And Rick's group slowly trying to work together. Rick's not liking any of them, you know. Just it was just very dramatic and crazy. And like I liked how uh, that one guy got bit early on in the episode, but he kept going on because he wanted to get back to his wife. And he still helped everyone out and like fought off zombies, even though he was bitten, not gonna make it. So that was really cool. Number fourteen is Vatos, Vatos, whatever you want to pronounce. I pronounce it Vatos. Glenn, Rick, Daryl, and T Dog had went back into Atlanta to get the guns and look for Merle, but there's a Mexican gang living there in a nursing home and they are here for the guns. They take Glenn captive. Um, and it's cool just because those four were my favorite characters. I remember like as soon as I saw that episode, I was over at my cousin's and I remember I made little Legos of those four. It was I just loved it and Daryl is when he starts like working with them. Yeah, he's still not 100% with the whole crew, but like he's working with them. And I like when he takes Merle's hand and throws it to... Uh, that little white kid and he's like yeah you want to see what happened to the last guy and he throws his hand down to him the mexican dudes like they're acting all tough and whatnot what you got to do in that world but like really they're good guys they're just trying to protect their own just like rick's group's trying to do and they are staying at this nursing home keeping taking care of all these old people because everyone else just dipped out on them you know fun fact actually two kind of fun facts in Season 2, Episode 1, there's a deleted scene of them going back to Vatos, the, that Vatos gang trying to stay there after their camp gets run, overrun and the CDC blows up. And when they get there, it's just a bunch of zombies and they're like, well, zombies didn't do this. Someone else came through and did this. So someone else had come through and, you know, destroyed their camp, which kind of sucks because they're good people. But another fun fact is, in Season 3 of The Walking Dead, the governor, one of his right-hand men is Schumpert. He's in the Vatos gang. I like to sort of think, oh, that that's Schumpert, you know? He just works for the governor now. But it, it he wasn't. He was just a Vatos gang member. He's one of the guys that are up on the roof holding Glenn with another dude. Okay, episode 13, Four Walls and a Roof. This is more of the cannibals, how, I, how it is in the comics. Yeah, they do the whole Terminus thing, which was cool and all. But, like, they don't have that whole facility and everything. They're just people roaming through the woods. And this is when they, they're at Gabriel's church. And their people are going missing. They're freaking out. And I really like it because it starts off the episode with uh, Bob realizing, you know, they've been eating his leg. And he starts laughing just hysterically. And they're like, stop laughing. What's wrong with you, dude? And he's like, I've been bitten, you pricks. T you're eating tainted meat. 
Tail did me, and they're all freaking out, spitting it up. They're like, oh my gosh, Gareth, what are we going to do? I, uh, and he's like, we cooked it. No, why didn't you check them? And, you know, they're losing their minds. But they really, like, Gareth's speech, everything, he and Bob's reaction is straight out of the pages from the comic book when it's Dale and Chris. Like, it was just so well. And I like when they get them in the church to kill him later on. Rick says... He's like, come on, uh, you don't have to do this. And Rick's like, yeah, but I already made you a promise. And pulls out the machete with the right handle, like he said, and chops him up. I just really loved that episode because I think it did the comic part really, yeah, did it justice. Yeah, they didn't go to their hideout and kill the cannibals. They did it at the church. But, but yeah, I really liked that episode. That was a dope one. Number 12 is still season the episode that Daryl and Beth are chilling in that house or whatever. Beth is looking for her first drink. They go to the golf course. And Daryl gets all drunk and he gets all violent and crazy. I'm like, Daryl, what the hell is your problem? Like, he was pissing me off. But, like, you really, you learn a lot about Daryl and Beth. And how Beth never really got to, you know, have too much of a fun life. Because she was just, it, it was her, she was her dad. Daryl had such a crappy life. And, like, Daryl and her, they just... I was really rooting for them to get together, even though everyone else was losing their minds. It just, I really like that. And, like, you see them talking on the porch. Just, you see them really opening up. I just think it was really cool, because Daryl doesn't, didn't really open up very much. And it was just really cool, because those are both made-up characters for the show. It's just them, that entire episode. Which, I get really annoyed when they do episodes where it's just certain characters, but the episode was really well done, I think. And it just, I really like showing the relationship because those are two characters you never saw together, you know? Like, on the farm, you definitely didn't see it. Season three, again, didn't really see it. Season four, at the beginning, you saw Daryl talk to Beth. But again, didn't really see them talking to each other. So them escaping the prison and surviving together, that was just a really cool idea, I think. And it was just... It was really cool. Uh, Daryl starts trying to help Beth survive better, and she's doing better at, at this. Uh, and but he's like real, being real aggressive when he gets drunk, and he's like pulling on her with the crossbow. Which I was like, Daryl, you gotta stop, dude. But it was really good episode, really emotional, and just really awesome to see the development of those characters. Number eleven is this sorrowful life. That is when Merle takes Michonne to the governor. Well, he's going to, but then he changes his mind and lets her free, Daryl goes after him, Rick's at the prison telling everybody that it's not his choice anymore, back when he said it's not a democracy anymore, it can't be like that, it, they're here, they got here, not because of him, because of each other, they wouldn't be here without each other, then Merle goes and redeems himself, he's been douched the entire series, he goes and takes out some of the governor's men, gave them a little bit more of a fighting chance, you know? tried to kill the governor you know failed obviously because it's the governor it was really cool of how he did it too like he was drinking getting drunk for his last day on earth and slowly drove played loud music had zombies follow him all the way there dropped out of the car let it roll and the zombies started killing people he started killing people but then the governor came and like bit his fingers off and merle was like i ain't gonna beg I'm begging you for nothing, which I like to think he's talking to God like he did back in season one when he was chained up on the roof. And he said he is like begging for God to set him free. But then he's like, you know what? I've never begged. I ain't begging for you. I And I like to think that's what he's talking about, not to the governor. I don't know if that's true or not, but I like to think that. And then Daryl comes back and like you really you just grew to love Merle. And Daryl comes and he's a zombie and he's eating Ben. And Daryl just starts crying, and he has to stab him and put him down. Emotional stuff. Number 10 is The Groves. That is the episode. It's just Tyrese, Carol, and the girls, the entire episode. Which you'd think, oh, that's so annoying, because Tyrese is basically a stroller now. Judith is an annoying baby, and these are two little girls. But it's really good. Really good. Because also, it gave me hope that Tyrese and Carol were finally going to get together like they did in the... Uh, in the comics, but that did not happen. But Carol finally admits to Tyree State. She's the one that killed Karen and David, and he forgave her. And you see them starting a life together, and they're all saying, we can live here, and maybe one day we'll go to Terminus, but now we don't have to go right away. We can live here you know, at this grove, this little house, and have a nice life. But Lizzie, you see that she's slowly losing her mind. And Lizzie is such a young actress at that time. I don't know how old she is now. But, oh my gosh, she kills that that entire episode. 
because they're taking the scenes from uh, Ben and Billy, the twins in the comics, what they do, and but they're doing it more in depth because they don't really do crap with them in the comics. They just sort of have it in the background. But when Carol catches Lizzie outside playing tag with a zombie, Lizzie's like, stop, it's my friend, no, no. And Carol kills it. She goes, she was trying to kill you. And Lizzie's like, she was trying to kill you it's the same thing it's the same thing what if i try to kill you what if i and like just the oh my gosh like you could see the sadness but anger and like just the, her face was getting so red teary-eyed like and carol saw that this girl was broken and there was no fixing her and she's like crap like and it was just oh, amazing acting on brighton shabiro or something like that but yeah Oh my gosh, amazing acting on her part. And then when Tyrese and Carol out there telling jokes. Uh, but yeah, and it was just really cool because they're really having a great life. And they return to Lizzie having her dead little sister, Mika. And said, it's okay. I didn't hurt her brain. She'll come back or whatever. And she was saying that Judith was going to be next. You'll see. They're okay. Then they have no idea what to do. And they're like, Judith can't even walk. And she's like, you're right, you're right. We'll have to wait for her. And so Tyrese takes Judith. And Carol's like, I promise, I'll just tie her up, and it'll be okay. But, you know, she buries, kills and buries Mika. And then they take Lizzie out to the field and just look at the flowers. It just, oh my god, that was so emotional, so emotional. Whew. That episode got to me, it was, but it was such good acting, such good acting. Emotional episode, though. Number nine, Judge, Jury, Executioner. That is when they are still trying to decide what to do with Randall. They've had him on the farm for days now, and they don't want to kill him, but some do. And so they're all in the house debating on what to do with him, if they should kill him or not. And her, Dale is really just not feeling it. He's trying to get everyone to change his mind. Andrea changes her mind. Dale was sad that Glenn never sided with him. It was, oh, and Daryl was saying earlier in the episode that the group was broken, and it was. It was broken. And Dale says, as he's getting upset, when he, he's like, you guys are just agreeing to killing a man. And Carol's like, uh, I don't care what we do. I just don't want to be a part of it. And Dale's like, saying something or not saying anything at all. You might as well be killing him yourself. And Rick's like, okay, that's enough. But I'm like, dang, Dale, that really hurts. And Patricia's like, would we hang him or how do we do it? And he's like, you're talking about this as if it's decided. Come on, this is a young man's life here. And it's just because that's the world they live in now. Like, it, it's a young man's life. They don't know what to do with him. Like... He could become evil. He seemed like a shady guy, but, like, they also saved his life. Why save his life to just kill him, you know? They should have just killed him right then and there when he's stuck on the fence. Put him out of his misery. And Dale gets upset and walks out of the house and grabs Daryl's shoulder and says, You're right, this group is broken. Walks out. It's just the group was broken. Dale's upset and he's walking out there and there's a cow moaning and making weird noises. He checks it out and it's torn open and he looks all scared turns around and that zombie that carl found in the woods whew, lunges onto him drops him to the ground god that destroyed me when i first saw that and dale starts screaming he's trying to fight him off he's yelling ah and everyone hears it daryl sprinting from his little corner out in the woods he's coming over and he's like hang in there buddy he kills the zombie he's like over here andrea rick shane Lori, everybody is sprinting to get to patricia is even in the background tearing up everybody because dale you care about dale he was an amazing man everybody sprints there to get to him even shane you see shane have like a look like damn like that's crazy like, it was just insane. And Rick says, Glenn, hurry, uh, help me. We got to get him up to the house so Herschel can do surgery. And Herschel says, Rick, he won't make the trip. And Rick says, all right, Glenn, get back to the house. You get the." And Herschel grabs Rick's shoulder and he shakes his head now. And Rick goes, no, and turns around. And I like, you just feel it. You feel it because you know all hope's lost and Dale is gone. And you see Rick trying to do it, and he couldn't do it. He just had to put Sophia down, and Dale is just staring at everyone. Oh my gosh, it's hurting. I'm about to tear up saying, talking about it. And Dale takes the gun from Rick and says, sorry, brother. <sighs> Number eight is season one, episode two, Guts. Rick first meets Glenn and the rest of the, well, the Atlanta crew that's living there. Well, him and Glenn cover themselves in Guts. They go out into the city full of zombies, which really made me nervous and to go get a car so they could all escape. I remember watching, I was like, oh my gosh, that can't work. And then it starts raining. And I remember my brother was in the kitchen making food and I ran in there. I'm like, dude, I don't know if you watch Walking Dead or not, but they're 
walking down the street and zombie guts disguising themselves and now it's raining they're gonna get caught and he was like oh that actually sounds pretty crazy i'm like yeah i'm getting really nervous i was freaking out i remember when rick and andrew are keeping guard in the department store on the first floor i was like oh lord rick's gonna hook up with this blonde girl awesome which she never does but i find it cool because he does in the comics they're married and then i believe it is that episode when he makes it to the atlanta camp and he gets out and he sees Carl and Laura and they all sprint to each other and hug and Shane's like, damn, I can't, that's awesome. He's back, he's alive, but he's also like, shit, he's back, he's alive. And it was just an amazing episode. Number seven is Spend. That is the episode that Glenn, Aiden, Tara, Eugene, Nicholas, and Noah all go on a run. And there's a zombie with a grenade and... Rick Glenn tries to warn Aiden, but he blows himself back on like spike things. And Tara gets knocked out. Eugene takes Tara to the van. Noah is keeping guard. Nicholas and Glenn are trying to get Aiden off there so they can get him back to the camp. But Nicholas freaks out and leaves, as they always do. And Aiden tells, him, tells Glenn, this is all our fault. We always leave him. Just go. Just get out of here. And so they leave Aiden. He gets torn to bits. And when they start spreading out of the building, Nicholas runs into the rotating door there whatever you want to call it and Glenn and Noah running behind him but then Nicholas starts running back in because zombies outside and they get stuck and Glenn says all right Noah you and Nicholas will hold the door still I'm gonna bust it open and then N Nicholas you'll come out that's the only way we're both getting out of here and uh, Eugene gets all the zombies out of there which was awesome because that's when he really starts stepping up and he wants to do his part and Nicholas starts freaking out. He goes, no, no, it's not going to work. And he's like, no, it will, Nicholas. You just got to listen to me. And he pushes out. And Noah gets pulled back. And you see Glenn. And he's trying to pull Noah back. And Noah's just like, let go. And no Glenn's face, he has to watch it. And Noah gets smacked up against the glass. And his face gets pulled open. And he's screaming. That destroyed me. That destroyed everybody. And we barely even got to know Noah. Like he wasn't even in a full season. And I got destroyed. Like oh my gosh that destroyed me. The actor Tyler James Williams. He told his family not to watch that episode. Because it looks so real. Uh, and then I like it because Nicholas gets to the car. And Eugene's like where's my friends? And he goes come on come on get in the car go. And he's like where's my friends? And he's like. You have a choice. You can either leave with me now or stay here and die with your friends. And Eugene tries to stand up to Nicholas to fight him, but he throws him to the ground. And as Nicholas starts getting in the car, Glenn grabs him, throws him to the ground, and beats the crap out of him, knocks him out, and gets him in the car. And, oh my, that episode was a good one, but destroyed me. Whew. Number six is No Way Out. Did, did that uh, comic arc justice. I thought they were going to drag it out way more than they did, but they did it, so that was awesome. I was honestly afraid that they were going to try to keep Ron alive when Jesse and uh, Sam were getting a swoop, but I was afraid they are going to try to keep Jesse alive so Rick and her could be together. But it's awesome. You, uh, the, all the woes are being taken out, but like all the zombies are here, and all the Alexandrians and everyone's trapped in their houses, scared for their lives. And that one wolf was with Denise, and he did get bit, but he did save Denise. He pushed through them and let them eat him so that she, uh, they could get through and also it's like because Carol shot him and it was like ugh. but yes people can change it was awesome because they're walking through the zombie horde Rick, Sam, Jesse, Carl, Ron, Michonne and Sam stops him up I can't do it I can't do it sees a little boy zombie starts thinking about what Carol said and they're like come on Sam we gotta go come on come on and he starts crying and the zombie goes Kah! Um, bites his head he starts screaming and Jesse starts screaming won't let go of him then she starts getting bit and she won't let go of Carl and Rick's like having flashbacks of real quick and he's all sad but then when she sees she's taking Carl down with him he starts hatcheting at her wrist and he starts having like re the like a red filters over his flashbacks of her he's like screw her and then Ron's like you and he's gonna shoot Rick but as he does it Michonne stabs through him to kill him and he blasts Carl in the face he's like Ed. And then Rick's like, no, and he picks him up and he's running to the house. And Michelle's like, and they get him. Denise saves his life. At the end, it's awesome because Rick goes out there all angry like he did with at the prison when Lori died. He's going to town. He's like, and then 
everybody comes together. All of Rick's group, all of the Alexandrians, every single one. Eric, Olivia, like even small little characters, Tobin, Bruce, everybody comes together and like, and it's just a beautiful scene. They have them chopping up the zombies like crazy, and then it lands with Rick going, and it was just beautiful, beautiful. Number five is 18 miles out, so that's when Shane and Rick are trying to take Randall out and get rid of him, and then he says, I know Maggie, I wouldn't kill her, I know her family, and they're like, crap, we can't get rid of him. Shane goes to shoot at Randall, and Rick pushes him, and then they get in a big fight. He tries to throw a wrench at him, drop a motorcycle on him. Rick hides under a zombie, a horde of zombies chases after Shane. One zombie's going after Randall, Randall gets himself, tries to get himself all untied and whatnot. Rick has struggling with like three zombies, kills them. Shane gets trapped on a bus, they're killing him, and Randall's like, I'll help you save Shane, or we can leave, and Rick leaves, I'm like, holy crap, he just left him. And then he comes back through all badass, he's like, Shane, get to the back of the bus! And like, it was so badass how he came in and saved him, but it was also like, dude, why the hell did you save him? And also in that episode is when Beth tries to commit suicide, and Maggie and Lori like, lose their shit on Andrew, and they're like, you should have been there, which is like true. Yeah, she should have been there, but like like Andrea said, she's made her choice. She wants to live, which was a really cool like way to look at it. You know what I mean? Like she tried to kill herself, which would have been sad if she did die. But she made her choice. She does want to live in this world. But you, in that world, you have to make the choice. It like that's it's come on. You some people just can't. Uh, Shane and Rick are on the road talking. He's like, "That's my son, my wife, my unborn child." If you want to kill me, you're going to have to do better than a wrench. And they get back in the car and start laughing like they're buddies again. And I'm like, okay. Number four is Killer Thin. That is when Andrew sets loose zombies all throughout the prison. Which still makes me happy because you see Herschel and everybody up at the fence. And everyone's looking up at them like, oh, it's so happy days. And there's no zombies. And then a second. Go watch it. I've rewatched it multiple times to just see if there's a possibility. There's no possibility for that many zombies to get that close to them in that amount of time. Herschel and Beth climb up in that little fence area, which I don't know why everybody didn't just climb up into the fence area, uh, but, you know, logic. And then Maggie takes Carl and Lori into the prison, and Carol and T-Dog are trying to fight them off. Rick, uh, Daryl, Glenn, Oscar, and Axel are sprinting through the fences trying to get through, unlock everything, and it's taking forever. And t Dog's trying to close one of the fences to keep the zombies out, and he gets bit. That destroyed me. Oh, my gosh, because... I wrote Singleton, I watched an interview when the season was premiering of all the cast, and he said, you're going to see a lot more T-Dog this season. No, because you killed him. You killed my boy. And that destroyed me. I was screaming when he died. Oh, my gosh. And he, uh, and then him and Carol, Carol's like, no. And Carol and T-Dog ran into the tombs trying to get back to the cell. So he goes, we got to get back to the cell. So Herschel, and he goes, no, I'm dead. It's too late. And he rushes those two zombies, slams them up against the wall, and lets them eat them so Carol can get away. He goes, go, get out. I'm dead. I'm dead. Carol gets out of there, and then you think Carol's dead also. And then Lori has to give birth, but she dies doing it. I, I was honestly happy when Lori died. I was clapping, no joke. But also that speech she gave to him, she was like, you're going to beat this world. You're my brave little boy. I love you so much. And that tore me up. Like, that was so... And Rick, uh, Carl had the flashback of Rick talking to him in season two. There's no more games. Uh, everyone's going to die. Your mom, me. But you got to be ready for it. And it was... And he has to put down his mom. And then everyone meets up and realizes T-Dog's dead. Carol's missing. And Maggie walks out holding... Judith and Carl was, has his head down with his gun out and Rick's like, where's the, where's, and Maggie's like, Rick, Rick, and he's like, no, no, and he drops to the ground. Just, we've had Lori and T-Dog since the beginning and then they die, you know, like I just, I wasn't expecting it. Number three is too far gone and the governor finally attacks the prison for the final time and I think they did that all, that governor wore justice there on that final one. And, I mean, yeah, they killed, like, two random prison people. Got all of the governor's people. But all of the sick people got on the prison bus and then died later on in the season, which was stupid. But he had Herschel and Michonne down there. And he's like, Rick, we're going to talk. There's a council now. And he's like, well, you're, ta you're talking to me. And Rick's like, we have enough room. And he goes, we can all live together. And I'm like, oh, Rick, you can't, though. And Herschel's like, it can work. And, oh, Rick's like, people, our friends, they came in here and became one of us, leaders. If you put down your weapons and you step through those gates, you become one of us. And they don't, and he like sees that Tara doesn't want to do it. And I love that because Tara becomes their part of the family later on. And the governor's like, he goes, 
We've all done the worst kinds of things just to survive. And I'm like, God, so true, so true. And the, he was like, we're not too far gone. Not too far gone. And the governor says, liar. And slices him. And everybody was like, no. And runs. And everybody's just mad. Michonne starts rolling to escape. They just start shooting like crazy. Maggie, but like, and they're just, you can see them destroyed. And then everybody gets split up. And then it kills me. Like, you see everyone getting split up, killing everybody. The girls save Tyrese. The Maggie, Bob, and Sasha get to, you know, run off together. They can't find Beth or, or freaking Glenn. And I like it when Rick finds Carl. And they find the baby carriage and think Judith's dead. And Carl starts shooting a zombie and, like, shoots it once but runs out of bullets and just keeps reloading, trying to shoot. And Rick holds him. And, like, it's just tear. Oh, tear jerker right there. And then they walk up over the hill, and he's like, don't look bad. I also like when Michonne stabs right through the governor. That was nice. Number two is No Sanctuary. They are taken in by the cannibals, and it's dope. Sam returns from season four, episode four. You see him go, don't slice, don't slice. And they're about to take everybody out. And Gareth stops him, and then you hear Carol outside blowing up crap. And I like that Tyrese and Carol find Martin out on the road. He says, yeah, I told him, the girl with the sword's bad news. But I called dibs on the kid's hat. And like, dude, you're just purposely trying to make sure they knew you had their people. And Tyrese beats the crap out of Martin. He's like, I won't, I won't. But it makes him mad that he says he kills him and then doesn't. Like, that was stupid. It was just so badass, all of them coming out and they stabbing people. And they were going to, uh, at the end of season four, when Rick kills Garrus' brother, he was on the table, like the cleansing table, to chop him up and eat him later. He was going to eat his brother. Carol shoots Mary in the knee and lets all the zombies in and eat her. Oh my gosh, that episode is just so action-packed. And you see them all working together. And I love it because you see Eugene like running off funny looking in the background. They all escape and then you see Carol pop up in the woods. Daryl runs up and spins, holds her. And Rick's like, was that you? Hugs her. And Rick's like, I sent you away. But will you have us or whatever? And now we're out here joining you. Will you have us? And uh, I like when she goes, you got to come with me. And Tyrese walks out of the cabin with Judith. Carl and Rick run to Judith. Sasha runs to Tyrese. And it's just a big old happy family reunion. And I like when Gus like, hey, Rick, I saw you go out in the woods with a, a duffel bag full of uh, what's in it. And he's like, I won't tell you, I won't tell you. And he goes, I'm going to kill Bob. And he's like, okay, I'll tell you. And he goes, a couple uh, semis, handguns, blah, 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 you know, other types of guns and crap. And he goes, and a uh, machete with a red handle. So what I'm gonna use to kill you and I'm he's like ah, and I'm like ah Rick and then he does keeps his promise okay we're almost done here honorable mentions are days gone by season one premiere and what lies ahead season two premiere just they're fantastic episodes so they're honorable mentions and number one is pretty much dead already fantastic episode Dale tries to take the guns out and hide them Shane follows him out and they fight and Dale's like am I gonna have to kill you is that what's gonna happen he's like Shane, you're made for this world, and Dale's and Shane's like, well, you know what, Dale? When you look at it in the, uh, what does he say, like a bed of light or something like that? Well, you're pretty much dead already. And I'm like, damn. And Rick's out there trying to catch her zombies with her shoulder, see it his way. And Shane comes up with all these guns, and Maggie's like, what are you doing with those guns? And Shane's like, you got yours, you got yours. All right, Carl, I'm gonna need you to take a gun, and you gotta protect your mom. You gotta protect your mom. You hear me? He looks to Glenn. He goes, do you got yours? And he hands him a gun, and he goes, come on, these people are living with monsters. We're looking for a little girl that's been dead. And like, yeah, and they go to the bar, and he's yelling, and they all sprint because Herschel and Rick have zombies. He's like, why does your man have guns? And I love it because he's like. And he goes, enough living with monsters in our backyard. Enough looking for a little girl that we know is dead. And you see Carol like, oh, that hurts me. And he's like, enough. And he's yelling, and oh, my gosh. And he goes, Herschel, uh, he goes, you think a person could come back from this? And Herschel's like, and Rick's like, hey, brother, stop this. And he's like, he goes, why is she still coming? That's her lungs. That's Tar. That's her chest. Why is she still coming? <laughs> Three shots to the chest. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I hate Shane, but I love Shane. Like, that acting was so amazing, that entire episode. He's like, why is she still coming? And Rick's like, Shane, enough. He goes, you're right. It is enough. 
shoots the zombie Herschel, drops, he's in shock, and he goes over to the barn, and he busts it open, he goes, come on, and they all start shooting the zombies like crazy, Shane looks back, shoots the zombie Rick has, and they're all just watching this unravel, and then, after all said and done, you see that little small white foot step out of that barn. That's when the water work started for Corbin. You see it slowly stepping out all crippled like. And you see everybody. And it's Sophia. She's like. <sighs> and Carl and Lori are crying. You see Carol start sprinting but Daryl grabs and he's like no no. And she keeps coming and it was just so freaking like. That's what they've worked so hard for. So many of them still had hope. Yes, yeah, some didn't, but so many still did. That's Carol's little girl. Carl's best friend. That's a little girl, you know? Like, I was just so... In like, at that point in The Walking Dead, that was like the craziest thing to happen. It's a little girl that they just... And Rick goes up, blasts her head, she drops to the ground, and that's the end of the episode. And the episode, like, normally it'll play music at the, you know, in the end credits, but when something crazy happens, it's just silent. And at the end of the episode, the credits were silent. The moment is silent for all the ones we've lost. If you agree or don't agree in, on this list, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to know what your favorite episodes are. Top 5, top 10, top 83. Just organize them the way you like them. I mean, that'll take a while if you like. And until next time, make sure you got a round in the chamber and the safety off. Hey, yo, if y'all like what you just saw in that video, hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up. Even if you don't, I'm sure there's something here for you, like Venus de Milo. Who doesn't love a good female turtle with boobs? You know, that's... Always a good time. We got unboxings, we got fake swords, and we got real swords.